listening to an episode of the Let's Netflix and Chill podcast hosted by Reese Chanson. Hello, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, depending on when you're listening and watching this. Welcome to the Let's Netflix and Chill podcast. I'm your host, Reese Chanson, and today we're looking at another documentary from Netflix, part of the Untold series. This series this time features uh, Jake Paul. Now you may ask yourself, who is Jake Paul? A Disney child actor, a YouTuber, an internet prankster, a social media icon, a businessman, a renowned boxer, an idiot, an unlucky prick, a problem child, as he calls himself, a bully, a loser, worst of the Pauls, an entertainer at heart, a menace to society, a bad boy, a future legend, and Hall of Famer in my books. Yeah. Goes to be or remains to be seen. Who is this man? This man is Jake Joseph Paul. JJ Paul. <laughs> this man was born in 1997, the 17th of January. Born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Grew up in Westlake with his brother, Logan Paul. Raised by his father, Greg Paul, and his mother, but that's an irrelevant story. Of course, Jake Paul is part of a duo of the Paul legacy or the Paul brotherhood. Logan, who happens to be a boxer, a wrestler, you know, an entertainer, a businessman. The guy owns Prime, if you have not heard of that. So, either way, whatever you think of the Paul brothers or Jake himself, because this documentary features him more emphasis pays more emphasis on his boxing career that sort of elevated him to stardom he was already a star but you know sort of put him into the eyes of the world that this kid this kid's got it i, I don't know i'm calling him a kid he's pretty much my age i'm like two years older than this guy he's already wealthier and famous and cooler than me of course people have their own opinion you know whether you think or feel some type of way about him, you cannot deny the fact that this guy is driven, he's determined, he's hardworking, he's ambitious, he's passionate. This man is a fighter. This man is a warrior. This man is what every man should aspire or assume or try to be, basically. Uh, you know, he has a professional bout of seven rounds, I mean, not seven rounds, <laughs> seven fights one loss a professional records that's like that's that's seven wins four knockout three decision wins and one loss of course that dent or that loss is from tommy fury that the fight that ended in uh, by decision now granted he fought a lot of washed up mc or you know former or ufc fighters mma fighters really and a bunch of YouTubers. Of course, those YouTubers are not part of his uh, professional boxing roster or buy it list or record. But so far, I look at it with, with, with skepticism at first. You know, like when I first saw a few fights, I was like, man, this, th these fights are rigged. Like the and Dane Gibb fight, I felt that was rigged. The Nate Robinson, he's a he's a he's an NBA player. Felt that was rigged, but then he started fighting Ben Arkison. He, he fought uh, Tyrone Willey, and then he fought Anderson Silva. I was like Anderson Silva, that guy's good. He, he's a he's former UFC champion. And then of course the the Tommy Fury fight that took place in uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know, fight of course went to the decision, but it was a hell of a fight. Man. It was furious. So I personally thought from the eyes of a lover of contacts, I'm not huge on boxing like I should be. I really love UFC. So when when former great legends like Mike Tyson say boxing is a dying sport, it is dying. It's, it, it is a dying sport. And I feel like uh, Jake Paul may be uh, the protagonist or the antagonist, whatever way you look at it, that, that might be the guy to save boxing from mediocrity and bring it to life to the site because if you look at it wrestling us i mean like the wwe you know has more fans than boxing more people watch wwe than they watch boxing globally and, and every year more and more people 
watch UFC through because of the fighters like uh, former UFC champions like Ronda Rousey, Conor McGregor, Nathan Diaz, Anderson Silva. Uh, you know, I can. It's a whole whole list of rosters of fighters of different caliber different styles the israel adesanya the style benders a whole bunch of fighters in the in the mma world and, and, and you think how many people can name like five boxers if you're not including the legends you're gonna say tyson theory but that's the current fighter that i can think of at the top of my head boxing boxes like Tyson, or oh, you can, a lot of people can lame legends like Muhammad Ali, Floyd Mayweather, you know, George Foreman. A lot of people can name a lot of people. But how many people can name the current boxers? Like, if you're not going to mention the Pacquiao's, who are you going to mention? You know, unless you're like really deep into the boxing world and like, so consumed and, and boxing fights take they don't fight every fucking weekend it happens once in a while every three four five months unless you're trying to watch the amateuristic fights where it's not the big stars the big movement of course boxing is boxing somebody's knocking somebody out but you know it, it takes a particular person to look at it that way and be like yeah maybe maybe so in the story of jake paul Jake Paul has really had an interesting journey of fighting. The documentary itself, the untold documentary, talks about his life growing up. It talks about it even pokes a bit of fun of all the things he'd done to get to where he is. The the silly YouTube videos, the silly vines back when Vine was still a thing. You know, and how he became a sensation. He became relevant. And then it, to a point where he became irrelevant, where everybody hated his guts. He got fired from Disney. His family thought he would off himself at a point, but somehow he stumbled upon boxing. Maybe he really loved boxing because as a young man, he was a wrestler, you know? So that in itself, discipline of fighting brings out a, a predator and a, a, a warrior in somebody, an animal, a vicious creature you know gruesome deadly powerful so that's what he became now i'm not saying he's one of the greatest fighters to ever live but i'll tell you he's one of the greatest promoters to ever live and through sitting down and watching this documentary uh, i got to know him a little bit better of course this was told through his eyes through his vision so it will have a positive spin to it it will have an ideology that it presents him as a villain and somehow he becomes more relatable, he becomes more humane. Now, of course, everybody's relatable, everybody's humane in every aspect. You can relate to anybody. Because every villain, you know, every hero's life story comes from something. Heroes are made because of the circumstances they are, they are dealt. And villains are also made to the circumstances that are dealt. And it's all about a decision. A hero would say, I don't want this to happen to anyone else, so I'm gonna stop it. And a villain would say, fuck this. This happened to me, I'm gonna make the world pay for what, what everybody saw this shit happening to me and no one did nothing. So it's really about choices. This young man was a prankster. He was a menace to society. Everybody hated his guts. He turned that shit around. And he built it into positivity, he built it into a business, a business that has generated a lot of money from, like a lot, like a lot, like all his fights, all his fights have generated over 125 million US dollars on pay-per-view sales, making him one, if not the most lucrative boxer of all time. So this dude is saving boxing one fight at a time he's bringing more eyes to boxing than ever before boxing used to sell itself you know but now he's selling it into an extremity level that's ridiculous it's beyond normal and, 
and he's cut out the middleman. He's doing the promotion himself on his YouTube, on his Instagram, or the, you know, he's doing that. And, and it's beautiful to watch. And, and, and you're like, wow, man, if I had that level of genius, that level of creativity, that level of brilliance, maybe I could be something. Maybe I could be a boxer. Maybe I could be, you know, a karate legend. I don't know what you're trying to be in your life, but I'd say instead of judging this kid, judging this man, he's a man now, you should be looking to be inspired by this man. Regardless of all the bullshit that you think you may hate him for. So most of the time people don't actually hate people, the media makes you hate people. Because let's be honest, a lot of people enjoyed his YouTube content. They did. I for one enjoyed it. And of course, there was that whole video where it was a homeless person dying and stuff, and he became a villain. He became a prank. Where his neighborhood, where he moved out, he was a prankster of some sort, and everybody hated his guts. It was just a kid being a kid with a lot of money. Granted, you know, who buys a seven million dollar mansion before they're 18? Who? How many of you guys would watch? that and say he's irresponsible how many of you would put in the same shoes same money same wealth wouldn't do some wild shit i know for one i would i would do some crazy shit bro and and for him to in, to enhance that or channel that into boxing channel that uh, uh, that guilt he might he might have felt when the world felt like the world wanted to kill him the world wanted to beat him down the world was against him and he managed to channel all that energy into fighting you know becoming a boxer becoming an elite boxer for that matter that in itself shows the level of eliteness and, and mental stability this guy has and i have to say that i'm impressed i got to know him better through this like i said it through his eyes through his vision through his direction so it might be a bit biased but based on what I already know, this guy was hated for a few things he did online. Now there's a bunch of YouTubers everybody hates. But how many have made millions? And how many have been a positive? This guy wanted to start or started a, a boxing union where he's getting fighters better pay. He did that. You know, he's getting better fighters better pay. He was attacking the UFC, talking about Dana White as a chump. He's not putting in uh, more money like UFC makes billions. It's a statement he said in the documentary. UFC makes billions a year, but they give the fighters 15% of that. That's just cold and heartless and rude and disrespectful for that matter. And my man is just making sure that he takes most of the pie, like most of the piece of the pie, most of it, and giving it out to whoever he can, whether it be its team fellow fighters, you know, people working under him, people working around him, uh, promoters and all that. So how do you take a kid from having a thousand followers on YouTube or subscribers, from making 200 bucks a video to making 5,000 to making millions? How do you grow that? It takes years, dedication, passion, commitment. Not, not a lot of people have that. And, and for me, that's the takeaway from this. The drive, the commitment, the passion, the ambition, the guts to do what no man has done before. Now, a lot of people have become boxers, but how many YouTubers went from recording in their bedroom, recording in their parents' basement, recording from their street, to being a Hollywood actor, to being on a Disney show, to being a boxer? How many people can do that, can say that? Before I reached 30, I was a millionaire. Before I reached 30, I was a Disney star. Before I reached 30, I was a boxer. He's not yet a champion boxer, but I think his trajectory is taking him to be, one day will be a professional boxing champion. Whether it be featherweight, neither weight, whatever weight class, he will be a champion. Unless he gets knocked the fuck out and somebody 
you know, shakes his brains or something and he can't fight no more. But if that shit doesn't happen, he's got enough power in his right hook to do some damage. Now, if he's practicing as much as I saw he was practicing on this documentary, if he's putting on that work while he's in Puerto Rico, he's going to be an, a force, an unstoppable force, really. No one is going to stop this kid, this man. He's going to be phenomenal. And some of us will be lucky to have seen it from the beginning, from the YouTube all the way to the arena where he's headlining Madison Square Garden. He's, he's in Saudi Arabia. He's doing whatever. I won't be surprised if this guy next year or a few years wants to fight in space, nigga, in some sort of uh, vacuum chamber and, and is fighting with another boxer and they're fighting in space and it's the biggest fight outside the earth. Cause that's the level of promoter he is and i think he can pull it off it's crazy and it's absurd to have a fight outside the earth you know in, in a boxing dome of some sort out of space but i think this guy can do it he can do it he can do it man. granted it will cost a lot of money but i'd watch that shit. i think a lot of people watch that shit. the first fight out of out of earth out in space that's big and if he somehow watches this and says, well, that's a great idea, I'm taking it. I don't want any rights to it. I just want you to acknowledge I came up with it first. That's all. <laughs> if that actually happens. It's, it's idiotic, but the level of marketing this guy is good at, I think it's possible. So, Jake Paul is really saving boxing. He's really saving boxing. And he's got the endorsement of Mike Tyson, of all people. So, he saved boxing. Boxing is in good hands. Now, if everyone stops fucking with him, get behind this kid. We are in for a great ass show, I tell you. An incredible show. So, put on your seatbelt. Uh, put on your 3D glasses if you got some. And, you know, grab some pork porns and the butter in that shit, sprinkle some salt, pepper, if you, I have pepper sometimes, anyway, it's a bit weird, but I know, and just sit back, and enjoy the show, now that was entertaining, you just listened to an episode of the Let's Netflix and Show podcast with Reese Jansen, with that being said, remember to support the podcast on Patreon, and let's hang out another time, adios folks, adios.